the time we leave. Um, I want to introduce our speakers today. Uh, Emily Thompson, she is the co-owner of Love and Integrity Funeral Home here in Greenville. Um, she also was the for the Greenville Legacy Awards Program. Um, Curtis, I think, came to Emily first uh, with the idea and got her on board right, right off the bat. Um, and Betty Franklin, all of you probably already know her. She's been active in the community for a long, long time, been on city council and helped the museum out, and a whole bunch of things. I could go on and on on that. Um, but without further ado, I'll turn it over to them and they'll tell you about the program and uh, maybe some of the some of the winners. They just had their award show Saturday night. It went awesome. It was great. And I'm um, looking forward to it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I didn't write anything down, so I was about to talk from my head. <laughs> so I want y'all to feel free to ask questions and things of that nature, because I believe in participation. Because uh, conversation is what changes all of us as we come and ask questions. The Reba Legacy was started in October 2018 uh, by Curtis Trailer. Curtis Trailer is uh, a native of Greenville, Texas. He lives in Japan. Uh, Kurt's trailer is a R&B singer well known in Japan. But he was born right here and raised in Greenville, Texas. He is the brother of Carolyn Trailer. Carolyn Trailer is a gospel uh, national recording artist that lives in Greenville to this very day. How the Greenville Lexington really came about, he went to his sister, Carolyn, first and told her the idea of, Carl, we're not getting enough recognition in the African-American community from Greenville on who we really are. Uh, most of the time when you think of the uh, Greenville North community, uh, community, you think of uh, negative uh, things, uh, but a lot of things that come out of uh, North Greenville that's bad is most of the people that's coming into the community doing the bad and we're getting the rep for it. So he said that we, we want to be, uh, show talent who we really are. Um, so um, Carolyn came with me uh, with the idea of it, the first um, pioneers of the Rainbow Legacy was, um, what's, it, what's the guy who, he, he's, he's in Michigan now, he, has a kidney, he had a kidney transplant, he's a well-known chef, hell, hell, Oliver Hell, Oliver Hell lives in, I think it is, Okay, Oliver Hell, he, he's a, uh, he had a kidney transplant. He, he, he's from Green. Um, he, he's a well-known chef all over. He, he does uh, recipes on diabetes and things of that nature. So you have to Google him and look him up. Uh, but he's, he's well-known. I, I met him myself uh, by me being younger than everybody. I'm only 44 years old. I've never seen him a day in my life. Never heard of him, nothing. But that's what the Green Legacy was about for us, you know, the younger generation and the older generation. Uh, the first Green Legacy was held uh, October 2018. Uh, that's when he came down and uh, we met who he was. I'm like, what? He from Green? <laughs> Some stuff that we don't know uh, as the younger generation. Also, in the uh, first Pioneer store was Kamita Thompson Spoon. Kamita Thompson Spoon is my mother. Uh, she lived in Atlanta, Georgia. She currently moved to Greenville. She's a school teacher at Travis. Uh, elementary school. Uh, the other pioneers of it was Ricky Simmons. He was involved in it. And then uh, Nat, later on it was uh, Cedric Dean. Cedric Dean is a former uh, city councilman. Uh, it was uh, Carla Trailer herself. Uh, then later joined with Sandra Linson Bell. Sandra Linson Bell is a investigator uh, for the Hunt County Clerk's Office. Greenville uh, Hunt County yes, Clerk's Office. Uh, so, so that's what we're doing. The first, um, October 2018, it was first held at the Texas Theater. We picked the Texas Theater because it was an elegant scene. We had dinner, we had things of this nature. Um, Barbara Horan was nice enough to uh, let us host it there. At that time, the, the singer uh, entertainment was Curtis Trailer and his sister. Um, the first um, unsung hero at that time was Teresa Thrash of the Kumba Heritage newspaper. So we tried to surprise her, and she didn't show up. <laughs> surprise. Yeah, surprise. We were surprised. <laughs> the joke was on us. And her, her family came from uh, 
from somewhere way in the other state, New, New Jersey. Jersey. She wasn't there either. And they were like, where's she at? We don't know. <laughs> so, um, so then we tried to um, better the program each year. We had a lot of nominees. Uh, the nominees we picked out of the community, uh, it's, it's community awards, best community sports, uh, we do business, we do civic and government, we do medical, uh, we do education, and what is it? Social. Social. It's, it's, it's about seven different awards. Mm -hmm. uh, so as time grew, we got better. So then the next one we decided, uh, let's not have it in October, let's have it in February. The reason we picked February in 2020 was because nothing in Greenville goes on in black, black history. Month. Uh, that's something that all the other cities around us recognize except Greenville, Texas. So we said, okay, we think it's more fitting to have who's this in February. But because we changed it, it was more of a courtesy to get here because it's wintertime and Japan has different months and days and nights <laughs> than we do. So that's where the committee, uh, we took charge as the executive committee and made sure that his dream uh, went on. Um, in doing this, uh, we tried to be a beacon of light of people that would never get recognized in our community, but we're trying to change that uh, in Greenville as being um, the steering committee for all of the Greenville citizens to support each other. I support your culture, you support my culture, because we're not doing that in Greenville. Greenville's getting ready to grow. So in order for us to grow and be recognized and to attract other people uh, to our community, we got to learn cultural diversity, right? So that's what, that's our key and goal in all of this for us to learn and support and love each other. Uh, so February 2020 um, uh, was the last time that our host was Fred Thomas. Fred Thomas uh, was with us from the, from the beginning. Uh, he was a well-known uh, upcoming from Regal, Texas, a gospel comedian. He was called Pastor Fred. He was traveling. He was uh, well known on the Ricky Smiley radio station on 94.5. When COVID hit, he died of COVID. Uh, so uh, this year, uh, we named. Uh, so that year, the unsung hero was in 2020. Was I don't remember. We don't remember. No. That, I just sing it though outside of this play. <laughs> And I forgot that quick. It was a beautiful display they have. Anybody that's watching on YouTube, please come to the Audie Mercury. I did a commercial. Did an Audie Mercury come uh, out here and see the display that they have. Um, this place is not a lot. It's my first time out here, by the way. Uh, but I am a talker, though. <laughs> so uh, the rest of the community, uh, the committee couldn't be here with us today. They work. I work too. Uh, I was coming off the road. I'm an insurance agent for American National as well. And like she told y'all, I work for a loving and terrible funeral home. It's the newest uh, funeral home here in Greenville, Texas. Okay, so in the Greenville uh, legacy, so the last one was February 2020, COVID hit. So we went two years without doing no Greenville legacy, no nothing. So um, Kristen Washington this year, she's the new city council. Uh, uh, place three. Place three. Uh, she's on the city council. She introduced us to Michael McVeigh. Michael McVeigh moved in uh, from Tennessee, I believe. He been at, he's been at the Greenville Municipal Auditorium for nine months. And when I tell you he's on the ball, I got to brag on him. So I'm putting that on YouTube, Michael. I'm, I'm bragging on him. <laughs> uh, Michael McVeigh, uh, he was picked to be the new uh, tourism and yes. uh, what else he does? Uh, Over Greenville Municipal Auditorium. Mm -hmm. And uh, his thing was, you got to be kind to people to attract people to Greenville. Uh, he's not, he's, he's white, you know, <laughs> just, you know, but that's, that's something unusual you see uh, in a small town like this that's attracting and bringing people together. And Michael McBay, just in a short period of time, he didn't only host one black history event, he hosted three all in one weekend. Uh, those were, first was the Rhythm in Our Blues, he then hosted the uh, uh, Arts and Crafts of Black History, and then it was the Greenville Legacy. That was the biggest Greenville Legacy we have had so far. It held over 300 and something people uh, came out. How did I know? Because I had 250 programs, we ran out. <laughs> <laughs> so, in doing that, we could no longer host it at the Texas Theater because it grew too uh, big. 
Um, and then doing that, but coming off of the COVID, we had some kinks to it because we was trying to work his equipment. It's not like the test the area equipment, so I'm asking y'all, if y'all do projects, help the Greenville Municipal Auditorium to get better equipment because we're all overusing it. Um, he holds it, no, his, his dream was when he came, he said when he first came, he seen that uh, most of the programs that was hosted at the Greenville Municipal Auditorium was toward uh, other cultures. He said, I want y'all here too. Y'all are welcome. And that meant the world to us to say, hey, you're welcome. Something we don't often hear. Uh, just like, I can't tell no lie on the camera. I seen Audie Mark Murphy, Cotton Museum. Who's going in there? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, people like uh, John and uh, Betty Franklin, they have been coming out to uh, the African American uh, communities, thanks to Susan for allowing them to. Um, and, and telling us about what they do out here and saying that, hey, we're welcome. We want y'all's history too. We're going to put your history on proper record while history is not recorded properly. That's where I think the Ringo Legacy and the Cotton Museum both are working together to, hey, say, hey, y'all belong here too. Y'all are welcome. So uh, this year, our unsung heroes were Mr. Noble Gilstrap. Uh, Mr. Noble Gilstrap has done a lot, 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 lot in this community. And I don't know if y'all knew it or not, he even bought the Boys and Girls Club a bus when they didn't have a bus. That's something, stuff like that, that we don't get the recognition for, other people get the recognition for, but he, he done a lot of things that was his heart for other people. Mr. Noble Gilstrap to this day, uh, He's, he's older now, so he didn't get to attend the Legacy Awards because he's in Brockcliff Nursing Home. But we just wanted to tell him to give his flowers while he's still living. Our next uh, unsung hero this year was Betty Jo Monday. Betty Jo Monday, uh, she has a lot of history in it herself. It's stuff that, by me being young, I didn't know about it. Uh, she was one of the first to integrate uh, what's now Texas A&M Commerce, uh, East Texas, as a black student. Uh, for uh, with four other students, uh, they was the first to occupy those seats when it was allowed to go. And I was like, what? You know, this mighty joke telling jokes you don't take it seriously sometimes. <laughs> but, but just reading her history, uh, she has been a uh, big pioneer in our music department when it comes to churches, funerals, and stuff like that. She learned to play the piano uh, through Mr. Flanoy. So we got to read her history and to know just more, a little bit more about her. Like I said, you don't know about a person until you conversate. Um, another uh, pioneer we had was Dr. Demetrius Nixon. Dr. Demetrius Nixon, uh, keep our history alive. She has been writing our black history uh, before the Greenville Legacy in the uh, Greenville Herald Banner. She was a, a writer. Uh, she also served on the Phoenix School Board uh, as a director for many, many years. And she did a lot of different things. She served on the Washington Carver Alumni Association. If y'all don't know what the Ross Washington Carver Alumni Association is, uh, Greenville used to have all black high schools, so now they have alumni that meets every what, July? Yes, every July um, they have a committee that does that where they bring them all together. Now most of them are dying out, so now they have included uh, Greenville high school students. And we want y'all to know that y'all are welcome out there too when they do have it. We don't want uh, what we do to be secluded or else we are defeating our purpose. Uh, so we just come out here today to let y'all know that y'all are welcome. Uh, even myself, uh, I'm the youngest funeral director uh, in Greenville, Texas. Um, I started up under the late uh, Miss Carrie Grundy, uh, where a lot of African Americans got our start right there on Hemphill Street on Grundy, uh, Grundy Street on Hemphill Street. Many of y'all probably still in that funeral home. So we all have history here. We just want y'all to know y'all welcome. Any questions? I used to serve on the Substandard Structures Board and, uh, several years ago mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to see some of the, the structures in North Greenville that needed to be either just maintained or torn down. Now when I go over there, I'm seeing an enormous number of wonderful new construction, lots of new houses, lots of old houses that are being renovated, and I'm just ex very excited about that very proud and pleased about that. I was wondering how that got started. It's interesting that you asked that question. One of our award winners this year that was recognized in business, and they uh, won that award, 
uh, they're just many of the builders over there. It was Tammy and Al Schaefer. <coughs> Tammy and Al Schaefer uh, um, got together with other builders and they started building houses in North Community where people can't afford. I can't, I'm still, I can't still get afford. <laughs> they too loud me. So I'll get for free. <laughs> but uh, that's how all that got started uh, in North Greenville. So they was one of the uh, Legacy Award winners. Uh, other award winners that uh, we recognized in the Greenville North community was uh, uh, Reverend Phil Dukes. Mm -hmm. Reverend Phil Dukes, uh, he's a black pastor at a white church. Ain't that awesome? <laughs> That's something that you don't see, but we are God's children. We're going to lead Man. each other, right? right. So, uh, Phil Deuce also serves on the Coastal Diversity Board. He, he, he had about 20 organizations, and I know. I said, he, he stood up on every category. <laughs> <laughs> but we just love Reverend Phil Deuce. Uh, we had uh, things like, uh, who else uh, was there that won? It was sports there in medicine. Uh, sports. Uh, in sports, uh, uh, Jason Stevenson, he, he's young, he's younger than me. Uh, Jason just opened up a gym in Greenville in the, oh, it's over there on George Street, uh, where they're training uh, uh, different people how to play sports and uh, things of that nature. Uh, one of my own cousins that uh, won the medicine award, she, she teaches medicine. She's from Greenville, Texas, she's young. And she's teaching medicine at the Texas a and Commerce School. She's a nurse at um, one of my hospitals in Dallas. I'm going blank. She's going to kill me when she sees this YouTube video. <laughs> uh, but she has a lot of uh, uh, degrees behind her name, the letters and stuff like that. She's got about 20 of them. <laughs> and I don't know what none of them mean, so she's in the camera. But she, she earned all that stuff. So it's a lot of people that just go unrecognized right here in Greenville. But my favorite of the program, what we did this year, that was added uh, to the program like no other year, we gave six youth $250 to encourage them to keep going forward. One of them, uh, she has a uh, disability. She's blind, but she's sung. I want y'all to go back and look at the videos. Y'all probably seen her introduced to the Greenville ISD when uh, her bus driver uh, got recognized. She sung. Her name was Addie Williams. Uh, Adeline Williams, <laughs> sorry, hey. uh, Adeline Williams. But she don't let her disability stop her. She has a beautiful voice. I want y'all to go Google. She has a TikTok uh, uh, page um, um, that she has, too. <laughs> Uh, but she sung Rayana's song, and she sung the better than Rayana. <laughs> uh, everyone should, when they walked out, everyone's like, can she really sing? But she didn't only sing, she sung. <laughs> uh, so um, so we, 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 we pick up people like that to let them know that, hey, you all welcome here, that we want to encourage you. So on behalf of Lovely Terry Funeral, we donated her $250 to encourage her. Uh, to keep going and whatever her needs was to keep going. Another student that we uh, honored was through uh, Francisco Davis Financial Service and his wife, and they're gonna kill me too, don't stand their business wrong, they know I talk wrong all the time, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, they honored a young man named Walter Abrams. Walter Abrams, uh, he, he, he's uh, doing band in school, but he's picking up his instrument uh, very well and let's just see him doing good in the community. He's holding down three jobs. He's 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to say, hey, Walter, we see you. And we just want you to know that, hey, one day it's going to get better. Here's your 250. Another young lady that we recognized by the Greenville Minister Alliance uh, Committee was Bobby Williams. Bobby Williams, she's a young lady. Both of her parents died. Her aunt and uncle was raising her. But Bobby's trying to better her situation. She's an eighth student at the Greenville Middle School. She's a cheerleader, she's on student council, all these things. So what we did was not just unrecognizing for sports, but hey, we see you. Uh, so what Bobby's trying to do, she started her own lip gloss business. Uh, so, and she makes her own lip gloss. So we say, hey, Bobby, take this $250, get your business started the correct way. Uh, then we honored um, another student. Her name was Javonna Riley. Javonna Riley, I know I'm talking about being out of the But uh, Devon Riley um, didn't have the opportunity like uh, some of the other students um, uh, that got to do the volleyball. They, they, they train them on um, uh, the volleyball besides school. Most kids can't afford that. 
So um, they have a, a volleyball elite team or something. So um, these kids struggle trying to come up with, trying to keep up with the other kids, but the other kids get picked on the teams because they got more experience than the other kids and advantage of them, but it's a financial thing. So we say, hey, Javon, we see your, uh, your $250, you keep playing. Uh, uh, there's another student. It was still out of commerce. Uh, uh, yes, there's a student out of commerce. I can't recall her name right now, but an anonymous donor gave her $250 because she wants to teach Braille when she grows up. So we will say, hey, we see you. Keep pushing. So that's what the Ring of Legs is uh, about. Um, not only about us, about the youth, about the upcoming youth to say, hey, I don't care what's going on around you, we got you. So that's what uh, we do. Um, uh, another young man that was showcased uh, in the Ring of Legacy, his name was Mighty Joe. His real name is, uh, what's his real name? I forgot his name, but his name ain't Mighty Joe. And I said, why do you call yourself Mighty Joe on your name? He gonna kill me when we see this video too. Uh, uh, if I Google it, I can tell you. I think but, uh, it's Justin. Uh, Justin, there you go, Justin. Justin Thomas is his name. Justin. Justin. Justin Thomas, but he called himself Mighty Joe. Justin, why do you call yourself Mighty Joe? He said, when I was little, I was about three years old, and they nicknamed me after this gorilla on the movie. I said, a gorilla on the movie? He said, yeah, I was out there in the world. He said, I was going hard for the world like a gorilla. He said, but now I'm going hard for the Lord. He said, that I'm a gorilla. So he said, I'm Mighty Joe. I said, oh, okay, I like that. So he brought a new talent and a new flavor to the Green Galaxy. Uh, at the Green Galaxy, he did hip hop. But in the hip hop, the, the old people, and I'm 44 years old, I didn't know what he was saying. But the, the young children was, was bobbing the beat to it, and they felt what he was saying. So it was then that he told a testimony. He said that I went to prison. He said, but in my prison sentence, that's when I found Jesus. He said, I'm Mighty Joe, I'm the gorilla. So uh, it was that type of stuff that brought the Brenda Legacy uh, about. Even Miss Rosalind, she just stepped in. We honored her one year, but she didn't even know the Grimble Legacy was. She didn't even know she was honored, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> but she came this year. She got to see what it was about. Uh, she was a big sponsor uh, of ours. Um, uh, if you say if you had a back of the program, we put her on the back of the program, cultural diversity, because the cultural diversity is playing a big part in what the Cotton Museum should be, what the Grimble Legacy should be. We should all be a part and together. And I'm gonna let Betty Franklin tell. I talk to you. I just want to thank Emily for that wonderful presentation, and especially about the Legacy Program. I uh, was awarded um, for community activities uh, this year, and I was just really amazed. And I really appreciate the city of Greenville, and uh, as well as the people in the community, for the nomination. And I just have to come in one more time on the use of the municipal building. It's, it's just like we are able to use that nice building. And it's because usually when there's activity going on in the municipal building, we just drive by, you know? So I think that was really wonderful of um, the new director to include uh, African American community. And as Emily said, there was over 300 people there. A lot of children there. We want to continue to encourage the children to participate. And thank you for your support. And, and somebody else, I can't leave off cameras. I know he's going to be watching his own cameras. So I better add it on there. <laughs> it was a young man. He watched the Ring of Legacy uh, for the first year, the second year, the third year. He said, where am I going to be a Greenville legend? I said, I don't know. Nobody put your name on there yet. But as we watched him grow, he's younger than me. His name is Genesis Steeps. Genesis Stevenson uh, played the piano. He started at Western Chapel. He went to Rose Sharon and more churches. And he got his talent up. He's a barber in Rockwall. So if you ever need your haircut, uh, go to Rockwall. No, no, don't leave Greenville, but if y'all in Rockwall, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he cuts hair. But Genesis has played uh, for big name people in the uh, in the gospel industry, uh, Jonathan Trailer and Kirk Franklin. So finally, Genesis this year won the Arts Award in the Greenville Legacy. You should have seen his heart. You know. <laughs> uh, also in the Arts Department was honored Donna Ward. Donna Ward has been an all-time favorite right here in Greenville, Texas, and we just wanted Donna Ward to know that we love him. Um, he's getting older, uh, the blues doctor, he said he got his start up on his father. 
Um, Mr. Tree Ward, I know many of y'all know Mr. Tree Ward, he did a good tour license. So him and his uh, brother James, and along with their other band members, LaShawn, and uh, it's another guy named Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry uh, was well known uh, in the high school jazz band. Um, and, and what I like about Mr. Perry, he's white, but he played with their black band because that's how it should be. We should be come together as one. Um, and uh, Donald Ward's son also plays with them, Darren. And we just want them to know that, hey, we haven't forgot you. And that's what the Greenville Legacy is all about. Any questions? This isn't a question so much as um, I got to listen to Fred Thomas's song that he had created about the Whataburger sandwich. That's mm -hmm. hilarious. If y'all haven't ever heard that, you need to Google it. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's on YouTube. It is funny. Did they end up using that, I think, in a commercial? Uh, I think Warburg did end up using him in a commercial. Um, so what we done with the Greenville Lakes, because like I said, he was a part of us before he died. We, we created our first award this year called the Fred Thomas Award. The Fred Thomas Award goes to uh, someone that has passed on and died. Uh, the first awardee of that award is Miss Charlie Miss Charlie Hawkins. Miss uh -huh. Charlie Hawkins. Miss Charlie Hawkins. Uh, she was the first black cafeteria manager in the school district. That don't seem like much, but to a black person, that was a lot back then. And we sure did think for our chili cheese hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more questions, concerns? Do y'all reach out and to the Greenville area only, or do you reach out like the Bowles home? Right now we're doing just the Greenville area only uh, because we want to, to recognize Greenville first, but eventually we're going to run out, so we're going to reach out to the county. But, you know, both home is an orphanage and, you know, they get a lot of kids that are, you know, don't have the opportunity that other kids do, mm -hmm. and they can, okay. they can use some recognition. Mm -hmm. Sure. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. As a matter of fact, me and the committee is going to meet on Thursday because really, truly, we didn't put a limitation on the youth part on who we are. Like I said, uh, one lady came, one, one student came from Commerce, Texas. So if you turn those names into us, uh, so we can look at it, we're trying to not discriminate on the children. Uh, so they necessarily don't have to be in Greenville. We want them to be from Hunt County uh, to say, hey, we see you. Uh, so please uh, let us know, give us those names so we will. Tell them about the voting system. Oh, well, the voting system on the uh, Greenville Lake, so we are trying to work out the kinks on it. Uh, how, 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 how that works, and how we get the nominations. Um, I don't think we have a social media. <laughs> In some part, we're trying to work it out. Uh, the community picks all, all, all the people um, uh, in the nominations. We don't just, just say, hey, North Greenville. So we put it on uh, Facebook, social media, and let different people from the uh, community pick who goes in those categories. Once we get everybody in the categories, we let the monthly survey pick on who wins. So the community speaks, and that's how that goes. It gets difficult at times because sometimes I'll be like, well, he should have won over him. <laughs> he had more recognition and awards and stuff over him, but it's, it's more, most of a popularity uh, thing. So we're trying to work out the kinks uh, on that part. But we just want them to know that they're all winners. That's what we try to push uh, to make sure that all are recognizable. We gotta work that part out a little bit more. <laughs> Any questions? This line. Emily, um, you're an unsung hero. Aww. I want to thank you so much for what you did um, in the awards. You're just like that duck on a pond. You just glide along slowly. No wonder that those lakes are going as hard as <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. So um, thank you so much for participating and for being a leader in it. And, uh, those of us that have been around a long, long time, we really appreciate the youth that's coming through to take our places. Thank you. And that meant a lot coming from this land. I almost teared up. But I went up, you know, it was terrible. Uh, like she said, I, I, I was, got started when I was like 16 or 44 up under the community. But I learned from people like her. I, 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 I wrote on their coattail and I learned. So I'm trying to pass on the generation of what I was taught. Uh, so that's why I participate and carry on the dream of Curtis Trader, even though he's not here. I said, Curtis, you own the song. We've got to do this. Uh, so uh, I'm always in the background. If they know he's on the program, I'm never on the program. I won't be on the program. Uh, uh, but I try to make sure that it goes off uh, well. 
uh, the first year that we had, I did get an honor, and I told them to put me on the ballot anymore. <laughs> uh, but every year, my name do come up on the ballot. I erase it, throw it in the trash. And I said a bunch of times, but my recognition comes from the older people uh, saying, hey, I see you carrying on our legend. So that, that means a lot to me. I'd like to know about both of your personal histories. Uh, where were you born and where have you lived? I, uh, I grew up in Sulphur Springs, Texas, and uh, at, I, uh, I moved to Dallas when I was a teenager. You know, they said it was the bright lights in Dallas. <laughs> so I moved to Dallas, and uh, I've always wanted to go to college. And the opportunity to attend college, uh, it was very difficult at that time, but the, the Pell Grant that came out, and I was able to go to El Central College for two years. But I wanted to go to East Texas State University back then. And I met a wonderful school counselor who, who grew me and helped me to get into East Texas State University. And once I graduated, I uh, got a job at a uh, job corps. I worked there um, a couple years, I believe. And then uh, an opportunity came here in Greenville for me to work at Greenville. At that time, it was called Hunt County Family Services. And I worked under Stella Johnson. A lot of people knew her. She was my supervisor. And I stayed there until, um, I can remember, January of 1990. And I went to Collin County. I worked Back then, it was called Collin County MHMR Center. But now, we don't use those terms. You know, it had to be politically correct. <laughs> so it's called, it's, now it's called Life Path. Stayed there probably 12 or 13 years. And someone said, come to Mahale, Texas. <laughs> so I went to Mahale, Mahale, Texas and worked for the state school. A couple years seemed like. And then uh, I watched them. I would go to Mahale, stay, then I would come home on the weekend. I watched them and they was building this building. It was Lakes Regional, MHMR. I, back then it was, it was called MHMR Center in Terrell, Texas. I said, I'm going to work for them. I'm going to get off the highway. <laughs> <laughs> and I applied for the apartment tool. Four, maybe oh six, and I got on as a caseworker. They would say, Betty, you are so qualified to do other things. I said, I want to rest. So if I get the caseworker position, I can don't have to work as hard. Uh -huh. So I can rest some. So I did that, and I was only going to stay a couple of years. I ended up staying 14 years. <laughs> in the meantime, I was active in the community here in Greenville. I wanted to get involved in social what was going on in the neighborhood. So I, of course, you know, I ran for city council. I was elected two terms. I filled one last year for Fred Thomas, and I did that. I learned a lot about city, uh, uh, city government, and I learned a lot. And then I saw the need, and I, I, you probably see me at the city council meeting. I don't mind going up there. Hey, we have a need. So, and that's how I, how I got involved with Emily. Um, I don't know, she's younger than my children, so I don't know. <laughs> but uh, she was doing things in the community, and I like that, you know. And so I said, yeah, what can I do to help? Yeah, so I really, I enjoy being around her, and I enjoy her passion. She is so dedicated, so I enjoy that, and a hard worker. So, thank you. and I met John, and John and I started doing some things together. Uh-huh. My story is interesting. I've been in Greenville, Texas, born and raised, still living in Greenville, Texas, I'm stuck. <laughs> um, I was in high school. My, my story is kind of like the other kids. I think that's why I take a, a passion in the Greenville legacy to honor the youth. Uh, my story came from Miss Ashford. I think her name was Miss Ashford. She was a pink lady at the hospital. My name is Ashford. Okay, I, I'm probably saying her name wrong, but I, I, I was in uh, a junior in high school, and um, she said, um, I was on the work program. She said, well, where do you work at? And I was young. I was trying to get out of school early. <laughs> so Ms. Ashley, she was a school teacher uh, at the high school. Um, she, was, she was well known, Jane Ashley. You know what I'm talking about? Now say her name? Jane Ashley. That's not her last name, Jay. It's over the A, her last name. I might be saying her last name wrong. She's watching, she's going to correct me when she sees it. <laughs> her first name is Jane, though. Asbury, Jane Asbury. That's her name. Ms. Jane Asbury was a uh, teacher at the high school, and she taught um, the co op program. And she said, If you're going to build a co op, you've got to have a job. So my father, 
I was a funeral director and owner, a fresh owner of Run Deep Funeral Home. His name is Keith Kozai. He bought into the uh, funeral home. He's my father. Yeah. <laughs> so Keith Kozai bought into a uh, Run Deep Funeral Home that used to be owned by Mrs. and uh, Mr. Thomas Grunt and Miss Carrie Grunt still living uh, when uh, I was in uh, school, high school. So what happened was I lied and told them I worked at the funeral home. <laughs> And so, uh, that I really didn't. And uh, so I had to tell my dad, which I wasn't raised with my father, I was raised by my great-grandmother because my mother and father was teenage parents. So my great-grandmother raised me and let them do whatever they were doing. So um, I had to go tell my dad, I said, I worked here, the teacher come looking for me, you got to let me work here because I got to get a grade. <laughs> so Ms. Ashford kept started coming to, Ms. Asbury uh, started to come uh, check for real to see if I was at work. So I would come in there every day and sit and watch cartoons. <laughs> and one day my daddy said, uh, you wanna go to a funeral with me? So I went to a funeral with him in Emory, Texas, and the only thing I did was hold up the picture. Next thing I know, I'm stuck being a film director in a bum. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how my story goes in Greenville, Texas. Uh, so now he has a funeral home in Greenville called Grace and Mercy Grundy. I have a funeral home uh, with two, with one of us, my mother, uh, Kamita Thompson School, and our other business partner, Deidre Hill, <coughs> and Love and Integrity. We're the first African American all woman, well, both ways, I guess, with the all <laughs> woman uh, own funeral home in Greenwood, Texas. We're, we're in the old Hillard Schools building, right there on uh, King and Joe Ramsey Street. So that's kind of how uh, I got my start. I have a son, he's 16 right now. He's on the co-op pro. <laughs> uh, so things transpired, whatever, and they say, where do you work at? I said, he works at the funeral home. <laughs> so right now, he, he, he's denying that that's in him. Uh, so right now, he, he's worked at Crumbs, he worked at Waterford, he worked at McDonald's. So eventually it's going to come back around. He's going to be a funeral director and he'll come. I'm going to let him figure it out. <laughs> uh, he has been on films with me since he was two years old. He uh, Now they do on films, which I don't always like. They do this funeral march thing now. So he's my marcher, but he's younger than me. Uh, so that's where I got my start. I also run uh, in Greenville an organization called the Greenville North Community Association. Uh, what we do is put positive images back into Greenville. Uh, sometimes we'll go knock on the older people doors with Santa Claus and say, hey, we remember you, we haven't forgotten you. Because once again, like uh, Miss Lane was saying, that's how I got my stars, through the old people watching them and how they do things. And Miss Franklin, I guess she was that old, she don't remember how she met. We met through the uh, Black Women's Club. And then, they, <laughs> and then they, they, they took me under their wings and made me do things in the uh, community and showed me the correct way how to do things in the community, something that we don't have or see anymore. So that's how I am who I am. They think I'm older than I am, but I'm young. Thank you, Miss Ashley. Is it? <coughs> I want, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is leaving. Uh, I want, since you mentioned the uh, location on King Street, I. I, uh, I really had a great smile as I went by on Halloween. Oh my gosh, y'all did the most beautiful setup. It was like a stage for Halloween. And I just smiled from one side to the other as I drove by and tried to slow down the traffic was going. What, what she's talking about is about two years ago, I said, we're going to celebrate Halloween. They said, how? We're going to put a casket outside with full of candy. <laughs> and so I, I, I drive a maid. I think it was COVID time, so the kids couldn't really trick or treat. So it, I drive away to a maid where you can go in and out. So I only about 200 cars pulled up. I wasn't expecting that. So we was outside dressed like angels and devils and all this stuff. We had a red casket out there. It was a hit. So we did it again. This time we did like a pink house. I had a pink out casket out there in, in memory of people who lost their lives from breast cancer. So last year I didn't do it, and I had so many phone calls. I'm like, y'all really, you know, remember that? Like, yeah, we don't have nothing to do. We don't sell casket no work. <laughs> so this year, needless to say, I got to put a casket. <laughs> I think they did too. Uh, okay. <laughs> we was on something. <laughs> Don't forget the cast. 
<laughs> but that was our way of, of saying to children, don't be afraid of them. And we'd let them stick their hand in the cast and get candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. cool. Any more? They ready to keep it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>